resources. What do people need to know about the changes to code? The beauty is they don't. Um, it's up to the electrical contractor in order to notify the customer what they're about to do. Just hopefully they're explaining what they're about to do in your home. Uh, making sure that they comply to today's electrical code, that's up to the electrical contractor in order to make sure that they've complied. ESA, the Electrical Safety Authority, then comes in during the inspection to make sure that everything complies. So as a homeowner, you don't need to know the changes. The electrical uh, contractor needs to stay up on, on many, many, many code changes that happen. Uh, Every year. Well, there, that makes sense changes. to me, but I mean, I've seen code changes along the way when it comes to electrical, and one of them was that uh, uh, smoke alarm with the strobe light, where the location is, one's got to be in every bedroom of the house, uh, on the second floor, in the basement, every level of the home, and every bedroom of the home. It's very, very rare that someone gets to correct Mike Holmes, but this is a perfect opportunity, and it is taped. So, Mike, that's a building uh, code, not electrical. As per electrical code, we need to answer to building code, meaning that if there's a building code that affects us, we need to do everything in our power to make sure that we satisfy that building code. So the reason the electrician puts in the smoke alarm is because it's a building code requirement. But if you're Same with vapor barrier around our box. But if you're, changing not electrical. if you're changing the electrical in the home, you have to comply well, with the again, codes. No, no. In, in, in solutions, like for our company, uh, we word it very, very carefully. Here's what it costs. This is what we're planning on doing. It's a building code. Uh, Ontario Building Code states that this, is, this needs to be done. Doesn't need to comply by electrical code. The, the electrical safety authority doesn't come in looking for smoke detectors. It's especially so on a renovation. You're, t you're telling me if a home is renovated, yes. an old home, yep. it's being renovated, yep. and you are rewiring the whole home. Yeah, I'll, I'll make your head spin in a sec. You finish that line. Are you required to put in the new strobe smoke alarms? Before I answer that, I'll, I'll answer it with another question. Your childhood home, remember your, your bedroom for argument's sake. You probably had one or two receptacles in your bedroom. Correct. Meanwhile, today's code would ask for three or four. By electrical Every 12 code, feet. Yeah, well, six feet from the door and every 12 feet from there on in. According to electrical code, I just need to make it safer than what it is for that home that was built in the 1900s. Even if you're rewiring the house? I don't need house? to add the extra receptacles as we just discussed. A good electrical contractor will automatically add them in. But for that cheap homeowner that wants to rewire the home because they're selling it, they only need to rewire what's existing. Holy cow. Yeah. So electrical okay, code, you me a something. lot like, you're welcome. So uh, electrical code is a lot like building code. We give you a bare minimum. Now it's up to you to surpass it. You surpass the building code every day that you're on a job. In electrical, we do the same. Maybe that's why I think it's code period because that's what I do every day. Maybe that's why you and I have gotten along for 20 years. Plus, <laughs> anyway. Okay, what about a homeowner out there that want, to, I mean, there's curious people. Maybe they want to know about changes in the electrical. Could they? Yeah, well, they can. Um, when you're taking the upgrading courses that are available through the Electrical Safety Authority and many other uh, agencies out there that offer the training, um, it's not really geared in layman's terms, so I don't know. That makes they, sense to me, actually. Well, it, you got to understand that we follow an electrical code book that is about yay thick. It's written by lawyers for the blue collar. So we have a hard time keeping on top of it. So the training is actually good for us because we've got people that help us interpret that code. Again, written by lawyers for us. So it's, uh, so it's a, you know, they're big shoes for us to fill and stay on top of. So Having the ESA inspectors, we're always in their ear asking for their advice on certain things. That's why sometimes you may get an electrician that's going to say, let me get back to you. I'm going to have to double check the code on that. It's, you know, it's a fairly thick book. Now, in residential, it's a lot easier. Um, there's less that we need to follow. In the commercial world, the industrial world, far more. I try to stay out of those two worlds because it's just too much for my little brain to handle. I remember when Joe, we called him Little Joe, you've seen him mini on the me. show many times. <laughs> yes, Mini Frank, uh, Mini Me, uh, 
when he was going to get his license, I was so proud of him because you trained him right from the beginning. You, he, he started with Frank, worked with us for years. Yes. And, and what happened was that he had, much like I do, we make it right on every single home we go in. We are above code, electrical, plumbing, structure, especially structure, never mind, electrical. Joe went to do his test and he answered a question incorrectly. And uh, did he fail or he almost failed because of it? Well, he got that question wrong for sure. He ended up passing overall, but that one question in particular that he remembered, uh, that he, he ended up getting it wrong because he was actually answering. What we do every day. Yeah. Make it better, make it right, above code. But the answer to the question was he didn't have to do it, but he said, we have to do it. So I was kind of proud of that moment. I really, you know, I just was because it's been distilled in his head that on an old home, yes, you must go six feet from every door receptacles, every 12 feet from that point. Yes. And I think, I think that was the question, actually. It may, it may have been, but on a retrofit, you don't have to. And the, the rationale behind it, that's the, the beauty of, you know, the beauty of Ontario electrical code would be that there's always a rationale to the code. Um, and their rationale ends up being that they don't want to make you go poor trying to make your house safe. So having it safer than what you have today is the goal. And as long as they make it safer than what you've got today, uh, then they've satisfied what, they, you know, what their mandate is. Yeah, I don't mind that then. I really don't. That means your existing electrical to your home, the whole goal is to make sure you're safe from electrical shocks and a fire. Yes, but here's the problem. You're buying a home nowadays, you're in the greater Toronto area, you're about to spend a hundred grand, whether you like it or not, sorry, <laughs> hundred grand, maybe 30 years ago, one million dollars. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're gonna spend a million dollars nowadays to be in the greater Toronto area. And you look at the electrical and doing it bare minimum. I say no, as an electrical contractor, very, very simple. After I leave and my permit passes with the bare minimum receptacles as we, you know, as code allows, um, what are you going to do as a homeowner? You're going to start running extension cords. So if the ESA inspector was to come in three or four days after you've actually moved in and you start using those extension cords, you're now in violation of the electrical code which lots of people don't seem to understand. An extension cord is for temporary use, not for permanent use because I don't have another receptacle where it should be. I'm gonna tell you an honest little story that happened to me. Oh my goodness, I'm getting older now. This would probably be whew, almost 30 years ago. Before I knew you, huh? Yes. Thank God. Okay, yes. so what'd you do? So almost 30 years ago, I rewired a whole house. Right? I didn't do it with a permit, I'm just being honest. I'm shaking my Back head. Back then, a lot of contractors didn't do it with permits. But I mean, I knew electrical because my dad taught me. I knew electrical because I've been hands-on experience since I was a little boy. I rewired the whole house. Someone, I assume, phoned mm -hmm. the permit office. An electrical inspector knocked on the front door, and I was there. Mm -hmm. So when, he, when I answered the door, he just said, hi, what's your name? I told him my name. I said, what's your name? He'd give me his card. He says, uh, I understand you're doing electrical in the house. And I said, yeah, I'm doing the whole house. And he said, uh, well, you didn't pull a permit and I'm gonna go through this entire house with a fine tooth comb. Mm -hmm. And if you've done anything wrong, Mr. Holmes, you're gonna be in trouble. And at the time there was no fines. This was just a point that I could be in trouble, uh, that I guess I could have a bad name for playing with electrical at someone's house and you know, to watch out, hey, I know better. Uh, but at the time, the homeowner didn't want to get a permit. I mean, I didn't push it at the time. The inspector went through the entire house mm -hmm. and he said to me, he said, this is some of the neatest work I have ever seen. Why aren't you a licensed electrician? I said, I'm a general contractor. I can do plumbing, I can do electrical, I can build the house, I can design the house. Do I have to become a licensed electrical con At the time, do I have to become an electrician? Because it wasn't licensed electrical contractor. Mm -hmm. And he said, to be honest, no, but you need to pull a permit. I pulled the permit, everything passed, and in the long run, grew a great relationship with the system of what I need to do. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying, you know, 
That's the way it was back then. Really, most people didn't pull permits. Well, Since television of 20 years, I think permit has gone through the roof mm -hmm. from building, plumbing, HVAC to electrical. That's so much that everyone has recognized, hey, if I'm going to do work in my home, we need to pull a permit. Mm -hmm. I'm still seeing people not pull permits. Like yes. you're on one of the jobs right now that we're doing that the contractor stole, as far as I'm concerned, $20,000 from the homeowner, played with the electrical, gutted the place, mm -hmm. left all the debris and walked out the door, took every penny they had. He was supposed to do the whole job, basement, bathroom, kitchen, bathroom upstairs. That's two bathrooms, a kitchen and a basement for $20,000. Does that sound right to you? Not a chance in hell is no. that ever going to happen. Okay, so there was my honest moment for the day, well. but I did the job right. I got the permits, and from that day forward, I never touched anything again without getting a permit. Because it's simple. I'm the guy that wants to do things right. I'm the guy that wants to educate everyone out there to do it right. It became known to me that the more you document what you do, the better purpose for you, me, and when I say you, resale of the home. Correct. I'm gonna help some, a lot of people out here. You ever had an extension cord that, uh, for whatever reason, looked curled like, uh, like Frank's hair right now? Hey. But when you bought the extension cord, it was straight, but all of a sudden it's curled. That's because it's been under a heavy load, correct? 100% correct. And or a surge. Yes but mainly it's been under a heavy load. Yes, I'm actually surprised that you knew that. Well, you I'm a contractor. Me. I have what? a lot of extension yeah. cords. Well. I'll pick up my cords and go, why is this curled? What the hell well, was then again, this you, put under? You also purchased probably a 16 gauge cord where the heavy duty ones are 14 gauge. Or 12, which or I 12. have 12 gauge by the way. And then those don't curl. Why? Because it's a bigger gauge line. It can right. handle it. So little things that we, we, we need to know is that, I mean, how many times have I seen this? And especially when I was younger, my, my mom would say, Mike, you got to go buy some more fuses, right? Because the 15 amp fuse blew in, in the electrical panel. Now everyone should be on breakers, but even that still needs to be inspected because again, it's got a shelf life. Don't ever take out, if you still have fuses, and I know there's still people out there that have there fuses. Are. Don't take out a 15 amp and put in a 20 amp, or a 25 amp, or a 30 amp. Don't do that. I've Why? Said it, I, I've said it a million times. Like, imagine that the breaker, the fuse, sorry, we're talking a fuse is set for 20 amps, where the wire is a 14 gauge wire that's good for 15 amps. Now we want to make sure that 80% of the load is normal use so it's actually only good for 12 amps but here we are we're going to draw 15 amps every once in a while okay it'll hold but if we have a circuit where we've got that little portable heater plugged in and for argument's sake i don't know your tv along with your computer computers actually draw quite a bit the older you know maybe not a laptop but the older uh, desktops and as you're using all this if the circuit starts to pull more than 15 amps, the wire starts to get hot. Then the fuse turns around and says, hey, I'm good for 20 amps. Meanwhile, the wire is still getting hot. So what's gonna burn first? The 20, 25, or sorry, 20 amp fuse or the wire that's only good for 15? The wire. Once that blows, where in the wall do you think that it, it blew? Which is your guess as good as mine. Yeah, but that, and they're lucky that it didn't cause a fire because well, think may. about that wire heating up. But it may. That's the trick. A lot of people take a chance and say, oh, wire blew and it's, oh, it's okay. No, it's not okay. We need to find where that blew because if it is behind that wall, the power's still live going to it. It is an electrical fire waiting to happen.